The suburb has long been known as the American standard of living. It is what I grew up in and what my parents grew up in, along with most of the country. It is all we've ever known. We thought the endless rows of houses were comforting and orderly, giving us ample room to live our lives free from interference. It was our own little pocket of reality. As kids, we could only leave it with a car, either with our parents driving us, or that coveted day when we turned 16 and could finally get our own driver's license. Our lives were segmented. We lived in one area, shopped in another, ate in another, and so on. Everything was far apart and nothing was allowed to intermix. Now, American suburban houses are lifeless and depressing, but that isn't what this video is about. This video is about something even worse. It's about this. Ah yes, the commercial experience in the American suburb. If you want to eat or shop, you are doomed to end up here. A massive multi-lane road in a relative state of disrepair with no sidewalks, bike lanes, or public transit in sight. If you don't own a car, you are not welcome here. But the car dependence isn't even the worst part of this photo. The worst part is the corporate sameness. That Popeyes, that White Castle, the Burger King down the street. Corporations like these completely dominate American suburbs, almost like a cancer or a plague. You can see one of them on every major street you travel on. They're like that creepy ex that will never let you go. And these places aren't exactly the pinnacle of culture and fine dining. They are the embodiment of mediocrity and laziness. In fact, we have become institutionalized in America. We are afraid to try anything other than these places. If we need to grab a quick dinner, we default to our list of fast food overlords to choose from. If someone suggests we try a non-chain place, so many questions come up. Well, I don't know. Are they good? I don't want to waste my time. I'm a simple person. I don't need anything fancy. These places have no culture. They have no soul. When you drive through a place like this, you have no human interaction. No one enjoys being in these places or wants to be here. You aren't getting any exercise from walking or biking. You only receive frustration when there is traffic, which, spoiler alert, there always is, no matter how many times they widen the road. You drove 10 minutes here just to wait in a drive through line for another 10 minutes to pay $10 for a 1500 calorie meal that doesn't even really taste that good. And you do this all the time. No wonder America is so depressed and overweight. But all of that aside, where is this? Well, America, of course, but where in America? The answer is everywhere. This is everywhere. It could literally be any American suburb. I could say this is Missouri, and you would believe me. I could say Wisconsin, or North Dakota, or Illinois, or any other state, and you wouldn't know otherwise. To prove my point further, let's play a game. We will go through 10 pictures of places like this in America, and you will have to guess which state they are from. Good luck. You're going to need it. Number one. Wait, isn't this the same place? No. It's actually across the country from the previous picture, but no one would know that. At least the road looks in better shape here, and there's a nice bike lane in the middle. Too bad it has to cross a 16-lane massive intersection ahead. Anyway, what state is this? Is it A, Minnesota, B, Indiana, C, New York, or D, Ohio? The answer is C, New York. If you got that, congratulations, you're literally just lucky. Number two, no pedestrian infrastructure in sight either, but at least there are pancakes that you can get 24 hours a day, if you own a car that is. Is this A, Maryland, B, Ohio, C, Vermont, or D, Georgia? The answer is B, Ohio. Number three, pick your poison. Oh well, at least the road work ended. Is it A, Pennsylvania, B, Washington, C, West Virginia, or D, South Dakota? The answer is A, Pennsylvania. Number four. Now this one has some clues. It has in and out so it must be in the western U.S. Isn't that sad that we know so much about our country just based off what fast food places are in a picture? So is it A, Texas, 
B, Utah, C, Arizona, or D, California? The answer is A, Texas. Number five. This one is nice because the road is perfectly cleared of snow while the sidewalk still has random snow patches all over it. Because screw you if you aren't in a car. So is it A, Montana, B, Utah, C, Wisconsin, or D, Minnesota? It's B, Utah. Number six. Turning left like this car is doing is terrifying on these roads, by the way. In my own life, I've started to go completely out of my way to avoid turns like that because of the amount of pure stress and anxiety they bring me. So is this A, Missouri, B, North Dakota, C, South Carolina, or D, Montana? It's D, Montana. Number seven. So this is Main Street, huh? Is it A, New Mexico, B, Arizona, C, Nevada, or D, Colorado? It's A, New Mexico. Number eight. Yeah, no comment. Is it A, Wisconsin, B, Arkansas, C, Alabama, or D, Michigan? It's D, Michigan. Number nine. The illusion of choice. Is it A, Kentucky, B, Maine, C, New Hampshire, or D, Connecticut? It's B, Maine. And finally, number 10. If you were pedestrian, you wouldn't feel nervous crossing this behemoth of a road, would you? Is this A, Wisconsin, B, Illinois, C, Kansas, or D, Minnesota. It's D, Minnesota. So then, how many did you get? If you got most of them, congratulations. You are simply lucky. There was no rhyme or reason to any of this. And by the way, I didn't spend hours handpicking these locations like I was trying on purpose to find ugly places in American suburbs. I literally just opened Google Maps, randomly zoomed in on somewhere on the map, and found these places nearly instantly. Everywhere. This is America. It's horrible, and we should be ashamed. But it's hard to know what is out there when you've lived under a rock your whole life. 40% of Americans have never left the country in their life. A shocking 10% of people have never even left the same state they were born in. So if this is all you know, then is there anything wrong with it? Yes, there is. Most of the world isn't like this, and if it is, it shouldn't be. Let's take a brief look at some commercial areas that are livable and aren't hopelessly depressing. Look at this. People smiling, actually interacting with each other, not honking at each other in rage during traffic jams. A large walkable promenade with decorative elements and unique storefronts. People exercising, talking, being human. Notice how most of the people here aren't obese or out of shape either. Almost as if being able to walk places and not being surrounded by fast food might be good for your health. If only we could have this. This would be so much better. But you can't have that. You can only have this. Like it or not, these places own you. They own all of us. They will continue to suck us dry as Americans until we finally stand up to the tyranny of the car and the mega corporation. Stop patronizing these businesses. You know, the places that can't pay a living wage, so they have to resort to enticing teenagers who don't even know that they're being exploited. The places where the service and the food are both horrible, but we keep going for some reason? Just stop going. Just stop. Ever since college, I've been walking much more and eating at these places far less, and I couldn't be more satisfied. I actually save money cooking on my own, and the food is much better, and I've lost around 50 pounds over the years. When I do decide to go out, I'll patronize an establishment that has actual quality and preferably as a local business. 
So join me and break the cycle so that the America we leave our kids doesn't look like this. Because if you keep going down this road, there's nothing there. Only disappointment and mediocrity.